recognize. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, liftoff. Now 10 seconds into flight. Vehicles begun the pitch over program. Body rate responses look good. Now 15 seconds in. Use gone close to control. Party money looks good at full thrust. See if you can keep the pressure on the best of these. Now 26 seconds into flight. Party 180 now throttling down to partial thrust as expected. Stage 1 throttle bucket. Power and telemetry nominal. For those of you just joining us, you are watching a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it ascends through the atmosphere carrying the SpaceX Dragon 2 capsule to vehicle orbit. Is the, first time. the vehicle just passed through max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. As you can hear in the background, the excitement at SpaceX headquarters is unbelievable here. The vehicle is passing through max Q. Body rate responses on the vehicle look good. One minute, 30 seconds in, standing by for SRV burnout. And we have burnout on both solid rocket boosters. Atlas will hold on to the SRBs for an additional 48 seconds prior to jettison. RD-180 has gone back up to full thrust as expected. Engine response looks good. One minute, 50 seconds in. Atlas is now 17 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,300 miles per hour. Shortly after that, the Merlin vacuum engine on the bottom of the second stage of the Falcon 9 will ignite in what we call second engine start, or SES. That'll be at 2 minutes and 46 seconds. So stand by for main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start coming up in just about 20 seconds from now. And we've seen good indication of jettison of both solid rocket boosters. Vehicle's gone to closed loop guidance. Now just under two minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. Two minutes, 35 seconds into flight. As you can hear from the cheering here at SpaceX headquarters, uh, we did have a successful main engine cutoff, a stage separation. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, that second, uh, second stage engine is currently started and accelerating Dragon towards orbit. On the left-hand side of your screen, that is a view from the first stage as it makes its way back down towards the Earth. Uh, let's go down to Lauren and Dan for updates on that first stage recovery. All right, so as you can just see, we lifted off. We had an awesome liftoff of stage one, and stage two is burning beautifully. Stage one also has a secondary mission that it is performing right now, which is getting ready to come back to the drone ship and land. So stage one is going to execute two burns before landing on the drone ship. The first is the entry burn start, which is starting at sep T plus seven minutes and 48 seconds approximately. Uh, that's where three of the M1D engines will reignite. And what that burn does is it slows down stage one as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. If we didn't do that, that aerodynamic re-entry heating, the aero heating would heat up stage one and it would potentially break it apart. So we gotta slow it down. Uh, from there, it, stage one is gonna coast its way back down using those grid fins to help steer it. And then it'll execute the landing burn. That's gonna happen at T plus nine minutes and 24 seconds. That's where we're going to reignite that center E9 engine to hopefully bring stage one down to a beautiful stop right on the drone ship. That's right, and while all that's happening, the second stage, which you can see glowing bright here, continuing to power Dragon, it's gonna continue burning 
until just about nine minutes after launch. So at eight minutes and 59 seconds is where it's targeted to cut off. Down to a single engine, but that one providing a little over 200,000 pounds of thrust to carry Dragon through the upper parts of Earth's atmosphere. Not as much resistance to fight against once you're up this high. And it's going to get Dragon into that initial orbit, and it's still going to be a couple hundred kilometers beneath the station. And then it'll be turned over to thrusters on Dragon once it separates from that second stage to then begin the chase down of the orbiting laboratory. But five minutes, 11 seconds and counting past launch. All the calls so far indicating nominal performance. So we're continuing to see great stuff so far uh, from both, Falcon, uh, both stages of Falcon 9. Okay, we're hearing that MVAC is performing nominally. It's looking good on power. Temperatures are good. And stage one continues to come back nominally. And look over there on the left on your screen, you see that picture of Ripley in that zero G indicator. That's right, keep an eye out as long as we have the view. As soon as Dragon's separated and it's essentially then in its free flight mode, you're gonna see that uh, little planet Earth start to float up. So keep an eye out once we, once we separate Dragon in just a couple of minutes from now. Six minutes past long. Trajectory continues to be nominal on stage two. about two and a half more minutes left of this burn, at which point MVAC will shut down. We are just under a minute away from that entry burn on stage one that I mentioned before. stage burn continues to burn nominally. All right, we're over seven minutes since that liftoff. Feels like it was 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Continuing to carry Dragon up. It's gonna make it to that initial orbit after it separates. The separation coming about a minute after that second stage cutoff. Stage two, propellant tank pressures are looking good. The burn continues to be healthy. Now coming up in about 10 seconds, that entry burn is going to start. Hopefully we'll have onboard video and you'll be able to watch. Let's listen in on the call outs. Stage one, FTS is safe. Stage one, entry burn has started. Look at that plane, so three M1D engines reigniting. Burn is going to continue on for about another 18 or so seconds. Yeah, so a little back-to-back -back action now as we see stage one coming back down towards Earth, stage two still making its way up into outer space. The dragon still nestled on top, getting ready. Stage one, entry burn, yeah. shutdown. And there's the end of that stage one stage shutdown. Okay, so stage one is going to continue to coast its way down using those grid fins for attitude control and steering. Next and in just under a minute. Ah, that's right. It's coming up in about 10 seconds. In fact, throttling now for Seco. Stage one is transponic. And we have had a successful shutdown. Ben Beck. All right. Stage one landing burn is supposed to start. At the start of that burn, stage one would be traveling at 275 meters per second. That single engine burn is going to bring that from 275 to zero. We did just hear that stage one landing burn has started. Let's 
See if we get it. about 500 kilometers away from where it launched from. The vehicle will now undergo its safing procedures, and the recovery team will make sure it's strapped down and it'll make its way back to Earth. Or, sorry, back to <laughs> Cape Canaveral. It's already on. So, there's still a lot more to go here. Uh, we have Dragon Separation coming up. Let's go back to Tom Perderio to cover that next big milestone. Wow, what a landing uh, coming up very shortly in just about 20 seconds here. Uh, the Dragon spacecraft is going to be separating from the top of the Falcon 9 rocket. Separation should be occurring around 11 minutes and 5 seconds, just about now. Let's wait for confirmation. Dragon, separation confirmed. And there it is. You're looking at a view from the top of the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. And uh, hard to make out in the uh, shadow of the Earth, but that is the Dragon 2 spacecraft uh, flying in space for the first time after a successful separation. This is a, a great day for everyone here at SpaceX and NASA. Uh, let's go back over to Gary and Johnson and see how they're handling it over there. Uh, it's kind of crazy over here. How is it here over there, Gary? And we have Miko, main engine cutoff. Body rate responses have remained very stable. Now passing 12 minutes into flight. Now Starliner will stay attached to Centaur again until about 15 minutes. Expected to separate at 14 minutes and 58 seconds after liftoff. And that will be the first time Starliner free flies in orbit. And at that point, Richard Jones and his team in Houston will have full control over the vehicle and they will set it up for an orbital insertion burn that will take place 16 minutes after separation. Approximately two minutes now remaining until OFT capsule separation. Body rate responses uh, continue to look very stable throughout this coast. So you're looking at the Boeing Mission Control Center there. At this point, they have transitioned to a mission support room. The people you're seeing sitting on console designed tested and built Starliner. They are the experts on the systems. So if flight controllers need any help, they will be the ones answering the call. Now passing 13 minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Now in just over a minute, we're expecting to hear that Starliner has separated from the vehicle. And about one minute now remaining until OFT separation. Body rates in the roll pitch and yaw direction all very close to null. and about 30 seconds away from spacecraft set. Now standing by for spacecraft separation.
and we have good indication of separation of the OFT capsule. There it is. ULA has successfully completed their piece of the mission. Starliner is free flying for the first time in space. From here, the Johnson Space Center mission controllers will be flying Starliner. We will hear reports exclusively from there.